Question 5a. Methyl benzene can undergo different reactions as shown in this figure 5.1. Okay, so for the reaction 1, we know that uh, it involves H2 and platinum. Obviously, this is the hydrogenation. So the methyl benzene will undergo hydrogenation and it will form this um, methyl cyclohexane. So means the double bonds inside the benzene ring now being saturated. For the reaction two, uh, is the halogen with UV light. So we know that this is the free radical substitution. Uh, it just involves the methyl group here. And this methyl group, one of the hydrogens will be substituted by bromine to form this CH2Br. Right, so this is the products after the free radical substitution. And uh, for reaction 3, uh, it's a bromine with the catalyst, iron uh, bromide catalyst. And uh, this one, we know that uh, the methyl group itself is the 2,4 directing group. Means whenever there is a halogenation uh, on the benzene ring, uh, so it will be uh, the uh, the substitutions will be uh, at uh, the second and the fourth position means this is the first carbon second carbon third carbon fourth carbon okay five six so means the substitutions will happen at this position right so therefore the possible products from this uh, halogenation it will be this two bromomethylbenzene and the uh, four bromo methyl benzene. Okay, so these are the products. Okay, so now part two. Uh, so uh, table five point one. Okay, so just complete that type of reactions for the reaction one uh, is the addition. Okay, even though the name called hydrogenation. Uh, but the type of reactions we still put addition and for the rea reaction two is the free radical substitution this is the name of the mechanisms okay, which you learn in the AS okay, for part B when the methyl benzene reacts with an electrophile a substitution reaction occurs so it's not going to be uh, any additions reactions take place okay but we, we know that in the benzene ring there are three double bonds three cc double bonds there so sometime you might think on the um, the additions might happen like this means the uh, halogen will saturate one or more of the double bond but this one is not going to happen it because the products that form is not stable. The products form the substitution, which is this one, right? Uh, it's more stable than the, uh, the addition products. So that's why this one is not happen. This one, it will happen because the product is more stable. Okay, so you just need to answer like this. The substitution product means this one, right? Is uh, stabilized by delocalization of the pi electron in the ring, means uh, it is more stable, okay? Uh, when it's undergo substitution rather than addition, right? The stabilization is because of the delocalization of pi electron in the ring. Okay, part C, the reactions of methyl benzene with the diobromide, okay, SOBr2. Uh, so this reaction is similar to the uh, alkylation, acylation, halogenation. Okay, in the presence of this iron three bromide catalyst, uh, so means uh, when we use uh, FeBr3 with the SOBr2, so this is a product that form, means uh, it will be the substitutions uh, reaction electrophilic substitution and uh, for this part uh, is give a, 
a lot of information uh, telling you how the electrophile to be formed. So this one is the okay SOBr2 re, okay, is reacts with the catalyst and the catalyst will get one bromine from the SOBr2. Then the SOBr2 now it will form the electrophile, okay, which we call SOBr positive, which is this one. And of course the catalyst now become FeBr4 negative. So it's get one bromide from the uh, this uh, SOBr2. Okay, then uh, for part one, you just need to complete the mechanism. Okay, so it's very easy mechanism. Uh, so you need to, because this SOBr positive is an electrophile. So you need to draw one arrow from the benzene ring, point to the sulfur with charge positive here. Right, so this is the first step. After that, uh, it will form the intermediate. So you need to show the CH bond okay, together with the SOBr here. Then you have to draw another arrow okay, from the CH bond. Okay, point into the ring shows that these electrons will move to the benzene ring and to, to move to the ring and restore the benzene ring. And of course, you have to draw this partial positive. This is actually the partial charge that form uh, when the intermediates uh, uh, is there. Right? So you have to draw this curve and positive. Right? So, and this is uh, uh, the one that you need to do. After that, when the CH bond break, then it will form the H plus and the products. This one, this is a products that form and it's from the hydrogen ion. Okay, part two. The reaction shown in the figure 5.2 just now produce a small amount of byproducts P. And the P now is has a molecular formula C14, H14OS. So this one is uh, telling us that uh, the P it must have two benzene ring because uh, the carbon number is too 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 many. Okay, so which means uh, is telling us that the okay this one this product will further react with the catalyst, and this catalyst again will get one bromine, okay from this product, and from this electrophile, and this electrophile will react with the methyl benzene and undergo the substitution like just now to form these products. So this is how we get the product P. Okay, so this is quite challenging. No? So yeah, try to try to analyze and try to do it. Okay, when you free. Okay, part B, a seal bromide uh, which is the this RCOBr can be synthesized by the reactions of carboxylic acid and the SOPr2. This is similar reactions to uh, synthesis the uh, acyl chloride using SOCl2. Uh, this one you already learned before, right? Okay, and now give an equations for the reactions between the ethanoic acid and the SOPr2. So it's quite easy. Uh, first, you need to know what is the product that form means uh, uh, when we use the ethanoic acid, so we must form this acyl bromide, right? Okay, so means OH here must be substituted, must go, and the H1, this H will combine with the bromine to form HPR. And another bromine in this uh, compound will form new bond with the carbonyl groups. Okay, then you form this uh, acyl bromide. And of course, this oxygen will combine with the remaining SO to form SO2. Uh, this is how you remember the, uh, the reactions, right? You, have, you can use your own way. 
Okay, now part two. Suggest the relative ease of the hydrolysis of acyl bromide, acyl chloride, and alkyl chloride. Okay, so uh, the hydrolysis, uh, the rate, it must be the acyl bromide first. If we compare acyl bromide and acyl chloride, then we have to look at the bond length. Because the bromine is larger, the bond length of this uh, CBR is actually longer and therefore is weaker and is easy to break. When it's easy to break means it's easy to get hydrolyzed. That's why the hydrolysis, the rate is faster for the acyl bromide than the acyl chloride because of the bond length. Okay, so therefore, the easiest to hydrolyze it must be the acyl bromide followed by acyl chloride and of course the last one is the alkyl chloride. Okay, so uh, of course you need to explain uh, the uh, better e uh, explain the easiest and the hardest. Okay, so why the acyl bromide is the easiest? Because the CBR bond is much weaker due to the bromine have a larger atomic radii. Okay, why the alkyl chloride is hardest? Uh, because this alkyl group is the electron donating group. So if you push the electron towards the partial positive carbon here, and therefore it strengthens the Cl bond, sorry, CCl bond here. Therefore it's harder to break. Uh, you can say that the alkyl group has electron donating uh, ability or you can say that positive inductive effect because it's pushed the electrons to the partial positive current and eventually the CCl bond now is get strengthened harder to break okay so it's not easily get hydrolyzed compared to others uh, if you want to really uh, explain about acyl chloride uh, why is easier than the, this alkyl chloride, uh, you can explain like this because the, the carbon is actually bonded to two electronegative atoms, one oxygen and one halogen. So therefore, uh, this one is more partial positive, okay, more partial positive, and therefore it's easier to undergo hydrolysis means the bond is easily break, easier break compared to this bond in the alkyl uh, uh, halides. Okay, so this is what you need to know okay, about the acyl halides. Okay, that's all. Thank you.